Hi and welcome to this Garden Gnome Software screencast. This screencast is looking at what's new in 5.1 and we're going to be looking at projections. Right, so what are projections? Well, if we have a look at the viewer, this is what is known as a rectilinear projection or our normal panoramic view. But what we can do now is change this to create little planets and some and and, and some other little projections as well. So if I change the projection to stereographic, that's its technical name, basically it's a little planet so I can create my little planets and we can change the projection over to a fisheye so if you're a photographer and have a fisheye lens you should recognize this sort of projection we've also worked out what the edges should be so rather than being um, black edges you can now see that we've got the image part of the fisheye as well okay so there is our projections um, you can change them by right button clicking in the viewer or if you've got the viewer settings panel open you can change it within the um, viewer settings okay so that's the projections now obviously we've changed it in the viewer but that's no good if you can't change it in your output so if we add an HTML5 output so let's just um, create this um, save the output and produce that so when I open it up there we go there's a normal pano with the normal projection but what I want to do is be able to let the viewer change it so if I look under the control tab and under the context menu, I now have a new um, menu item called Add Projection Items. So if I now publish this out and open, you can now see there's my rectilinear. And when I can now choose stereographic, which as we said, would be my little planet. So I can just zoom out a little bit with my mouse and we can create little planets. And of course, we can also change to the fisheye projection as well. There we go. Right, so let's go back to rectilinear. So they are the, the projections and that's what they do. They create some nice effects in the image. Okay, um, now you've seen I can right button click in the context menu. We can also use the skin to change projections. So if I open up skin editor, I'm gonna add uh, a couple of rectangles. And the first rectangle I'm gonna use to change back to my default view. So it'll be a mouse click, view, move to default view and I'm going to set the speed to three or well, it's okay three and we can use timing functions now we've got several here we've got ease out so it starts off quickly and then as we get to the default view it starts to slow down and stop ease in and out so it starts off slow speeds up and as we get to the default view it starts to slow down again and then we've got ease out back in other words it starts off fairly quickly it overshoots the default view but then eases slowly back to it and then the last one is linear where the um, where as we're moving to the default view it's a constant speed I'm going to use the ease in out because I think that's the best one and on the second button we're going to use this to change our projection so that is going to be a mouse click under view change projection and I'm going to change to stereographic or a little planet and I'll set the speed to three again right okay so let's save the skin I'm going to save that to the project file and just call it skin and then we're going to publish and see what this looks like so there's the normal rectilinear and when I click the stereographic or the little planet I can create this zoom out with my mouse and this is my little planet and of course when I click the move to default view not only is it going to move to default view it will change the projection back to rectilinear as well because that's my default right okay so that's that's quite cool um, now obviously I've got a little planet or a fisheye and I've got rectilinear so what I can actually do is set up a fly-in so if I click viewing parameters you can see I've got my default view settings here which we had before I'm actually going to change the default view to looking at the building and click set I've got to make sure that my projection in the viewer is rectilinear so it all matches but what I'm now going to do is I'm going to change the projection in the viewer to stereographic and I'm going to create my starting point for my flying so I'm, there it is it's a stereographic that's what I want so under the flying it's already set to stereographic I'm now going to click set so basically we're going to go from this view to this view all right cool so and the player is going to work out all the steps and all the frames in between and the way we switch that on 
is if we open up the um, auto rotation tab I'm going to select flying and under speed you can see it's set to the number 2 the higher the number the faster the flying but 2 is adequate and I'm going to just publish this out and when we have a look at this now we can now see I've got my little planet um, or my stereographic to rectilinear or normal view flying okay if you've got Pano 2 VR Pro um, you can actually create flyings for each and individual node um, but yeah this is the initial flying for the um, standard version right okay so with that said um, the last thing I want to show you is our animator now as you know Pano 2 VR version 5 we gave you the animator to be able to animate or produce a auto tour now what we can do is add projections to this as well so if I choose a clip which is obviously this is a, a standard version so I've only got one input image and if we look on the timelines now I can change the pan tilt field of view but also the projection so if I move the scrubber over to one second in I am going to um, add a projection by double clicking change it to stereographic and I'm going to set that to half a second and click OK and I'm going to move that back to that point and I'm going to set the keyframes there okay right so that's all my keyframes set and what I'm going to do is add another second to the timeline but this time round I'm going to create my little planet view and I'm going to select the keyframe oh set the keyframes there there we go so if I rewind that and press play you can see I'm creating my little planet I'm going to move it one second on further and I'm going to rotate the little planet to a different view and select the keyframes and then I move it on another second more and I'm going to start to come back to a normal view I'm still in the stereographic view at the moment so I'm just going to select the keyframes there but now what I'm going to do is select for rectilinear move it forward and then select the keyframes there so if I rewind and press play you can see this is my little animation with changing all the projections I'm just going to trim to timeline you right button click in the timeline I can try trim to the last keyframe I'm going to select close and now what I'm going to do is use this as an auto rotate so if I select auto rotation um, start after fully loaded and I'm going to select animation there we go so if I now um, actually what I'm going to do is set the time to one second as well so it starts quicker and we're now going to publish this out so what's going to happen is we're going to have our fly in into the panorama once that's settled we're now going to have the start timer of the one second and then we're going to go into the animation that we've set okay right so basically we're just morphing around different projections and the animation is just going to loop if I, I can break into this at any point I've broken to it when it's still um, a stereographic projection but I can always hit the move to default view or I could have used the right button click to select the rectilinear projection if I wanted to change what view I'm looking at okay that's the different projections in Pano 2 VR that's what they are that's how to use them and thanks for watching